All right, guys, we are back with another one, and it happened. I mean, Bitcoin went lower than I thought maybe we would ever see it again. It broke that what I thought to be very strong 69,000 support line. So what did I do? Did I freak out and panic? And no, no, don't be ridiculous. And I think you guys didn't either because you guys watch this channel, right? So what did we do? We went and scooped up the dip. Of course, I can't really buy the dip because I'm already 100% allocated in altcoins. But in this, in this video today, I'm going to tell you guys exactly how I made quite a bit of money today so far. And I'm also going to show you the most wild, I mean, in my 12 years of crypto, the most insane chart I have ever seen. What the hell is BOM? And we're about to talk about that as well and how I played that. Of course, it's another Solana meme, guys. So without further ado, let's dive into it. But before we do, guys, do us all a favor and destroy that like button. And if you're new to the channel, what's up? My name is Kyle Chasse here to bring you the hottest alpha in the entire space so that you can make the most money humanly possible during this insane super cycle we are experiencing. So guys, let's first and foremost look at the Bitcoin chart. As you can see, basically fell off a cliff right here. And then I think I think I kind of woke up over here. I'm like, yeah, no worries. I slept through that. I'm glad I recovered that. Bam! In the morning again. And people got really scared, right? But what did I instantly do? I went, and you guys know that like normally I have like two or three trades open. It's usually, you see it on Bitcoin, ETH, and maybe one other one, Solana. But you can see today I've got more open, right? I've got Tau, Solana, Rune, well, already Rune, Injective, ETH. Man, what the hell are you doing, ETH? Come on, come on, Dan Kuhn upgrade. Like no one really cares about ETH anymore. This is, this, you know, we'll get into that in the show here. But you can see like, I just don't care. I just don't care about these pullbacks. They're healthy and it gives us an opportunity to, you know, when I saw this, like when I, when I came into this thing, I was like, man, let's see if I can go to the injective chart and see, show you guys where my entrance was. Um, but it just felt like it was a good, yeah, see down here, like basically the bottom, right? And then I felt like, okay, the, the bottom is in. Uh, because we know, we watch this show every day, right? We know exactly what's going on out there on a macro perspective. We know that there's just too much buying pressure. And if you're not convinced yet, because maybe today's your first day watching the, watching the video, let's just go ahead and check out some of this data here. So TED Talks Macro says $3.84 billion in, U in volume today for uh, IBIT, that's yesterday for uh, BlackRock, $7.8 in total traded for the spot Bitcoin ETFs, big Day. You can see this is by each ETF, IBIT just destroying, and then the total volume, another massive day, almost $8 billion in trading volume, incredible. And as you can see, there was uh, still positive inflows of $137 million, as you can see here in the chart. I think it's going to pop up quite small. Uh, it, was kind of, it was kind of a lighter day overall, right? 345, 345 in from BlackRock, 257 out from Grayscale. Look, at, the good thing is, guys, every single day, Grayscale is purging, and eventually that purge will subside, right? That purge will subside, and we had a big day. I mean, we all were feeling probably a little too euphoric. We all needed a little little smack uh, to, to come back to Earth. Everyone was over leveraged. Everybody was, you know, like just euphoric. We all thought we were going to the moon. Marcus had to remind us that it's never up only. Don't get too aggressive with your with your uh, leverage, and we had four hundred million dollars in long liquidated. But we've talked about Mister One Hundred before, right? And who, who has on average been buying one hundred Bitcoin a day since like November twenty twenty two or something? Well, guess what? Yesterday he bought nine hundred, which is exactly how many Bitcoin are mined in one day. One account bought all the Bitcoin that were mined in one day yesterday. Now, there's speculation, and I've been talking to you guys about this before. Speculation that this is a nation state. Uh, Oliver Alvell says, and I'm going to read this to you because I've already said this to you before, but essentially, this is either a extremely rich, 
high net worth individual, but more than likely this is a country, right? And, the, and what he goes into talking about is saying that countries are not going to go buy the ETF. Why? The same reason that they're not going to go buy a gold ETF. They want to hold it themselves in their own custody and have it because they don't want to be in a situation where if they, if they do something that the United States doesn't like, then the U.S. says, hey, guess what? You're not getting your Bitcoin back. Obviously, that's the beautiful thing about Bitcoin as we can self-custody it, right? So there's no way. And this, my friends, if you've been watching this channel, if you know my philosophy, this is just getting started. This is the, like, like, I said, like I said, we over the past two months have started to see the first dominoes to really fall. And people keep expecting to, people keep expecting to, uh, to, to see this kind of slow down, but it's just accelerating. Right. And uh, Walter Bloomberg says Bitcoin has already surpassed gold in investor portfolio allocation. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Pepe, fact. <laughs> it's, 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 just, it's just a far, far, far better. Now, uh, Chimp Zoo says tops are hard to call. No one can perfectly call a top. But I believe Bitcoin is within the margin of error of a top. I believe we have sufficient reason to believe this is a top. And in hindsight, we will say it's obvious. Let's take a break. So this, in my opinion, couldn't be any further from the truth. I mean, just because, I mean, obviously there's going to be a, I mean, have you seen the dog? He's got a hat on. So of course he belongs on the, the dome in Las Vegas. But he's trying to make a thread of why I think this is the top. You guys... We haven't even got to the having yet. Like, this is crazy. I, and, and I'm not going to go through the whole thread. He goes to he's saying the meme coin meme mania, and we are. But this is just this. This is just a. Um, this is just a taste of things to come. That's why I'm so excited right now, and that's why, for me, I'm not. You know, for me, the priority right now for me for the next. You know, and pff, trust me, sleep is suffering. You know, social life is suffering. But for the next, you know, 12 to 18 months, 20, however. You know, this is priority because people are thinking that it's been so good that it must be a top. Must be a top. I'm gonna get, I, I want to show you one thing here, this guy. Do not be this guy. And this is what happens when you forget to pay attention to macro news and you just try, like, try to look at charts all day long. Number six, Korea. So num, uh, Korea's number one trader, Sato, shorted the entire way up to 70,000, flipped long at 71.5 and then got wrecked again today. <sighs> That's funny. Do, like, you cannot be buried in charts, right? You can trade like I do for fun, right? Like, all of this stuff here is for fun. It just keeps me entertained. It's like going to the casino, but for me, it's like I'm sitting here doing work all day, so I might as well go to this, this casino, right? And then when I'm feeling really degenerate, I go to the shitcoin casino, and we'll talk about what that is later. But all of this money, on, for me personally, and the derivatives exchange, it's something that I'm, I would be okay losing. Yeah, it sucks, but it also you know, sucks losing money at the casino. Anyway, this is the Bitcoin tether chart. Does this look bearish to you at all? No, it's actually coming through into price discovery. Obviously, we talked about price discovery before. As you can see, the crypto total market cap this is about to surpass, as we talked about before, the crypto market cap, the all-time high of last bull run was $3 trillion, and we are about to touch it. But remember, this was the insane bull run of 2017 over here. The insane one, right? And then imagine, imagine if you called the top right here or something like that, but then bam, right? And so this is going to go bam up here. And this is the total crypto market cap, uh, excluding Bitcoin and ETH. Still a long way to go. Again, 2017 over here, it was a crazy alt season. Everyone felt rich. Everyone was in Lambos. And then, you know, imagine if you had thought the top was right around here. Nah, nah, nah not even close. Not even close. And plus, this was all retail driven the past, the past two bull runs, right? This is now it's just been all institutional money coming in. Uh, so Horst says, I have a hard time believing that this is the top signal. Uh, is it a sign of excess? Eh, sure, but excess can last a long time. Instead, I view this similar, similarly uh, to the hat on the bull that caught my attention at 30 cents. An extraordinary number of people who have no idea what whiff is will see this and think, wow, what an adorable dog. 
what is that about? It's safe to say a decent amount of uh, that curiosity will convert into flows. And of course, I'm still holding all of my, and my, my bag still has a hat on it. <laughs> so course also says, delete anyone that says this is the last cycle or final chance. A massive secular shift in flows is just starting with much longer term ramifications. Now, I don't know if I necessarily agree with this. I think that this potentially might be the last chance to make sick, sick life-changing gains. Eventually, one day, the crypto market will be more like the equities market, meaning that it'll take you, you know, instead of expecting to get in a bull run, expecting, you know, thousands of percent or hundreds of percent a year at minimum, you might expect 15% a year, 20% if you have a good year, right? And then if you do, if you invest into a business, you might expect, you know, for that to return after 10 years. So this might be the last mega opportunity. So you need to pay attention. You need to pay attention. I'm dialed in. Are you guys dialed in? If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that, guys. We have been diving in every single day, making sure that we are as prepared as possible to deal with everything that gets thrown at us. So I just wanted to show you here that, um, that so, uh, so he says, more than $50 trillion worth of assets is currently starting to be inherited by us, <laughs> the retard generation, where 20% of them allocate more than 50% to crypto. So you can see that, um, yeah, so here basically the younger generation who is allocating uh, you know, more than 20% of that inheritance. But the point is, is that, uh, is that us, I mean, I'm, I'm much older than this 24 years old here, but, and my portfolio is much more than 20% 20 per, 20 crypto. But anyway, the point is, this is the average, is that you have a vast majority of people putting more and more of their wealth into crypto. This is going to be absolutely massive. So Miles says, many altcoins are down double digits today, but I would be even more concerned if the market was straight up only. Flushes are healthy in a bull market to ensure sustainable growth. This is true about anything, and this will actually make me question what I'm going to show you guys in just a bit here. And Rayan says, if you're looking for altcoins with relative strength to buy in this correction, do the following. And, and I had a little bit, I actually actually used Banter Bubbles today in a little bit of a different method. I'll, I'll show you, um, but Rayan says, you know, toggle, go to Banter Bubbles, toggle the hour tab and look for the ones that bounce the fastest. And so if you can see on his picture here, he's got um, the hour and seeing which ones bounce the, the fastest. Now what I did instead, when I showed you, I showed you over here for injective, I, I basically came here at the bottom. When I felt like the bottom was in, when I felt like it was just starting to kind of turn around and, I, you know, I was like, I don't know. I, I just kind of had this gut feeling. And you can see my injective trade is up already $11,000. Um, so what I did is I actually came over and I said, ooh, look at Jupiter. Uh, one thing you notice here too, guys, and we're gonna, is, is Solana, Solana ecosystem, right? That is what's happening. So what I did is I went to over here for me, I went to the top 100 and I went for the past today, 24 hours. And what I did is I looked for the things that we've been talking about over the past few months, the tokens that had the most mind share and were down the most, right? And that's why I chose Rune or Thorchain and Injective. Um, and uh, let's see, was, was there another one? And, and uh, Tau wasn't down the most, but like it was still, still Tau is, so, you know, we know the, air, the narrative. It was down enough. Like we've seen Tau go to like 720 bucks. It was like five what was it? Uh, 604 when I, when I bought it in here, when I longed it. That's actually was just before I started filming. These other ones were earlier, but the soul trade is up extremely well, guys. And if you can see over here, uh, as you can see in a sea full of red, there's one that's standing out and all of these meme coins, meme coin mania is hell hopping on Solana. People need to buy soul to buy the meme coins. It's just, it is where all the action is and it seems crazy not to be super in that ecosystem. You know, one of the things that I want to do, and I talked about too, I think yesterday, is I want to go find, uh, you know, learn how to use Soul Lens so I can do the Ave looping thing. And I'll talk about that. And I'll also talk about soon uh, another method that we just discovered from Thorchain that I have not, not tried yet. But you can see Solana is up 9% today. I told you guys about this all the time. We've been, we've been buying this on this channel since, aggressively since 20 bucks. 
right? And we're up at 182 right now. I told you when it breaks 160, it's going to go to 180. When it breaks 180, it's going to 200 and then all time highs. And this thing is just on a rip. Now it's already at all time highs when it comes down to market cap. Now you might say, well, how come it's not the same price, but if it can get market cap, it's because there's a bigger circulating supply, meaning that VC unlocks have already happened. And it's still, so it's a higher market cap, but the price isn't quite there to all time high yet price. So, but as you can see, when you compare Solana to things like Bitcoin or Ethereum, it is already breaking resistance right now. And it's going into kind of price discovery. It is good to be in the Solana ecosystem right now. It, we, we are still like today, as you're watching this, we are still ahead of the market when it comes to, uh, the masses coming in, right? And watching this channel, us uh, studying this kind of stuff, you get to look at, you get to have a, essentially a looking glass, right? Into the future and understand where the attention is going to be. That's extremely valuable, right? And so right now the Solana ecosystem is where it's at. And Fred, who we quote, quote often, basically, uh, you know, he's a Bitcoin maximalist, but now he says he's going to do it, uh, an, an interview with uh, Mark Jeffrey from ThorChain talking about a new way to loan against uh, your Bitcoin with no risk of liquidation and, uh, and no interest as long as you repay it. Um, I'm not going to read this because I actually want to go look into this myself and, uh, and, and actually try it because that sounds phenomenal, right? Phenomenal. Um, so I'm going to go try this out, actually. Um, and I want to go make this Bitcoin or Solana or crypto lending DeFi video for you guys where we learn how to borrow against our collateral so we can leverage a little bit and basically get more exposure in a bull market. It's a good way that we can increase our bags uh, in a smart way without, um, you know, it, without being too risky. Uh, it's one, been one of my favorite methods to do so far. It's exactly what Michael Saylor does. It's what Coinbase just recently started doing. Um, and it's what we do. So today we go to book of meme. Now this website was not easy to find. Uh, all I did was see a chart that looked like this. If we go here to the, uh, let's go to the one hour. All right, we're already on the one hour. Let's see, let's go to. So this thing was going from, I don't know why it's not reloading. But anyway, like I caught this thing right, right on here and I was just like, what the hell is going on? Now you can see there's a bit of a sell off. This thing was basically vertical from the time it launched, um, as you can see. And insane, it's on all kinds of, like a day and a half ago it launched or whatever, right? And, um, and so right now, uh, it just went straight up and the volume, I, I, I actually saw it on Banter Bubbles. I was like going through and I was looking at like the top, I was like the top two, that's like here. No, I was just kind of like looking through these things. And then I saw like this huge, oh, look at pockets up. Nice. You guys know I like pocket a lot. Where is our, uh... anyway, I was looking through here. Where the heck is it? I don't know. Anyway, I was going through here and bam, this huge bubble. I was like, what the hell is that? And I checked it out and uh, it was this um, boom. And the volume is crazy. Look at this. You've got $1.52 billion of trading volume in the first day. It's been listed on KuCoin, Coin, uh, like all these centralized exchanges the first day. And there's not even a website. Oh, there is a website. Yeah, but I... Didn't no one like it's not listed on Coin Market Cap. It's not listed on Coin Gecko. Um, essentially, I had to find it over here from Bird's Eye, and then cleverly like hidden right here. Um, and so then you go and look at okay, what is it? And you can see I, I longed it earlier. Lost. I got. I got. You know, I lost it on this correction right here. And right now, what I expect, like I don't think this is going away because essentially what this is, in my interpretation anyway, this is kind of like. Uh, first of all, this is an artist who made this, and this is kind of, he, he's doing a project um, of forever cataloging on blockchain, the best memes, and this is essentially like an entire um, exposure to uh, to the entire meme category, kind of like an e ETF, if you will. Um, still not a lot of information, but uh, 
because of the attention it got. The one thing, though, is there was a 50% of tokens were pre-sold. And so I think that's what's happening right now. Um, I, I never, I don't think I ever so aggressively sold stuff and bought into this one, as you can see here on this chart. And you can see I started buying down here, which is around $350 million market cap. And I even bought up here. So, uh, you know, these ones are now at a loss. Um, but for me personally, I, I think that this thing is going to catch on, um, on its first day now sitting at, you know, 682 million fully diluted valuation, uh, and just getting started. I actually really enjoy the, uh, the X account. It's an artist and he, it just, he's, he makes memes. And to me, this is like, uh, it's just, it's just the representation of where we are, where we, where we are headed in this space. Um, so his, the, the only kind of thing at first that I saw was this dark farms, uh, kind of artist that makes this sick art. And, uh, and as you can see, he says $600 million, a good starting point for two days. I'm, uh, I'm an artist, not a trader. And this show is art. No plans to sell a single bohm. Uh, it's not about money. It's about sending a message. And so, but one of the ones I really like, where is it? Like, uh, he's doing something that impersonates the wolf of all street. Um, this is like, I think catch me if you can, which is great. Like really clever kinds of stuff. Um, to, I, I probably one person, but I don't know. But uh, it's just great, like great, um, great individual independent art, and uh, and so I like it. So we'll see how it goes. My my guess is that this is people taking profit, but yeah. But for me, I this is one that I feel like I have high, high conviction in. Um, I did go quite heavy all the way up here. Uh, why? Because I was kind of in late at like $350 million market cap. Um, but again, this is kind of, and, and it's actually a little bit degenerative of me because, uh, it's not one that I was able to see build over a period of like at least five or six days. Like I was with Pepe and then with Bonk, I had even longer to kind of prepare. Um, and then with Whiff, I got, I, I kind of had a gut feeling by now. So, so now this is kind of for me. We'll see how this goes. You guys are witnessing this live. This happened today. This is kind of intuition. And so I saw this taking off at 350. I saw the virality. There's 55, almost 56,000 wallet holders right now. Like for me, I see this thing popping off like crazy. Um, and in about a week or two, you guys will see a familiarity with this and something I've been talking about, um, which is very interesting when I first saw the website. Um, so guys, anyway, oh look, and by the way, Bitcoin coming back. You don't have to worry, you know, like hopefully freaking ETH. Oh uh, yeah, okay, I was up, down 44,000 earlier. It's coming back, guys. Market is looking good. Again, you have to have confidence here. Yep, everything's looking healthy, 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 healthy. So next time you see a big correction like that, know where we are in the market. Don't worry about like, oh, is this over or whatever. Take advantage. Take advantage, either do what Rand did or what I did, go to Bencher Bubbles, you know, and take advantage to, um, you know, make, take some positions in the market and, uh, and, uh, and, and use the tools that we, that we, uh, that we'd said, you know, look for either the things that are back, bouncing back the, the quickest or things that we've been talking about in this channel, you know, like Celestia, we've been talking about, we've been talking about Manta, all soul ecosystem, injective making all time highs, you know, Rune, we talked about all these things recently. So they got recent mind share, right? And so the first thing that people are going to see when they want to go buy the dip is they're going to think about what, what, what's fresh in my mind. They're not going to dig deep and like try to think about what was popular a while back. They're going to think, what do I remember off the top of my head? Cause I quickly want to buy this dip, right? That's the same mentality that you have to have when this happens is like, what thing cr crashed the hardest that I think is going to bounce the hardest. And for me, Injective and Rune so far have been good decisions. Um, and, if, and Tau, like, it wasn't, it wasn't, follow actually, Tau was one of the things of, as, as more in the style that Rand said when I looked at the one hour chart instead of the 24 hour chart on Banjo Bubbles. And I saw that uh, it was actually coming back and correcting the quickest. So when I went to the one hour and I saw at the time the market looked like it was starting to correct, Tau was kind of leading the pack. Um, but you can see, look at ticker Bitcoin over here. Let's go just to, so if we're doing it right now and say, ah, now everything's green, like happy days, guys. 
All good. Look, my favorite dog we've had is Rupert. I love you. Rupert's my favorite dog, but Whiff is, uh, it's nice to see green again, guys. Feel good. Um, let these guys take profits over here. Oof. That does not look nice for me, but um, let's see how it's looking over here. Ah, not so bad. Anyway. All right, guys. Um, that's going to wrap it up today. I hope that you have a wonderful day, evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you are. I will catch you guys later. Bye-bye.